Hello everyone, in today's video I am going to analyze the safety fence and share some of my ideas to better prepare and protect against the fence. So if you're watching this video, you have probably watched many others. You have probably seen also the fence can be indeed very dangerous in the hands of good players, especially if they have the good skills and the good units. This may eventually feel very unfair. I don't think the average player will cause you much trouble however. Furthermore, you may have heard about the idea of using fast save armors and traps protecting against melee. Something like this. For example, this is indeed by far the best protection against player phase strategies. On the other hand, you probably know my opinion on this. I always believed save your skills along with duo heroes were by far the worst addition to AR. I don't like those, that's why I will never use Savior. That's why also I'm not going to say anything more about it, unfortunately. But I still believe you can build a good defense without Savior, and I have for this video three AR defense examples. First one is a Pathfinder cave line which I used last week. You notice I have a fence here which I am not using in offense, it's only here to show you what scenario might eventually unfold. And reading carefully the effect of fence, you also understand that the fence is a direct counterplay to odd recovery because if you can force turn 1 engagement, recovery removes penalties which means you can use plenty of buffs, which I do on both seasons, but not only that, it removes nasty effects like gravity and isolation, but now because of a fence. The opponent can wait turn 2 for sudden panic and panic manner to better destroy you, along with gravity and isolation eventually. If you were to use even recovery instead, they will just engage turn 1 because now you can't counter panic effects turn 1 anymore. You will notice now I have buildings here, which are meant to waste multiple actions and delay engagement. I am also placing traps here away from my frontline cavalry. This is because I believe hit and run using a melee is probably a bit less obvious than just using ranged units. If you use disarm trap, however, a possibility for you is having multiple traps placed in this row. Let's say you engage with duolin and snipe some Mia. This implies you have to gamble on this trap if you want to dance or reposition. Unless the unit itself also has another disarm trap. In general, having multiple buildings to destroy here makes it very difficult to test the trap, let's say this one, and then replacing that unit into safety. Remember that running fence and bonus structures it denies even more space. Here, if you want to test a trap with Layla after destroying the chairs, you have to dance with Peony from below and then having Layla reposition Peony back into safety, which is not possible because of a bonus structure. So, in this case, the only thing you can do probably is this. Clearing all buildings and wait for next turn. And now you have more space to engage. But here's the problem. Sure thing. If you do this, you say. What's this? Right. now you have to save both Claude and Layla. If you want to dance Claude and you want to save Layla, you cannot do this again because of a bonus structure. So unless you have multiple Kanto and Trace skill, a pure hit and run strategy seems a bit difficult. However, a hybrid hit and run tanking is definitely possible and much more viable against this kind of defense which denies space. Now moving on, the second defense example 
which does not force turn one engagement but is stronger against player phase because mainly because of flame providing damage reduction to almost everyone. I believe however Nifo is better than flame because she inflicts flash and has much better offensive power. Flame requires speed IV, she requires ARD attack speed or a catch, speed res rain and blade session. And if you think the mobility is an issue for Flame, when your other units are chasing, you have to use aerobatics or something like that. So you are not using Blade Session for Flame. So this could be kind of a problem if she has only two movement instead of someone like Nifo who has three movement. Very, very important. So. With respect to the defense, looking at the front line units, you see Hollywood, Winter Moth, Brave Edelgard, they have obviously much greater bulk than my cavalry's in my previous defense. Only Edelgard is not protected by damage reduction. She probably requires heavy investment, something like ARD, Death Res, Death Res Bond Secret Seal, and in the future maybe Death Res form in the seal. So the purpose of this defense is to use a Nifo instead of Flame or Hollywood launch to activate and trigger Wings of Mercy on Bramimon. If needed you can add Wings of Mercy on Duo Leaf and Winter Moth. I believe Hollywood is still good today. Good at surviving. If he survives and even if Lunge does not trigger due to near save, which will be probably less common than far save, again there is still multiple Wings of Mercy solutions for you. As for the build, Elliewood can use Gale Force, he can use Glaces, which is probably better, or maybe he can use also, I think it's called Escutcheon for better surviving. Special Fighter is pretty strong. This is why I think someone like Ellie Wood, for this kind of defense with multiple Wings of Mercy, Pathfinder, Edelgard, Moth, he's not a bad option if used this way. You have noticed also there is no odd recovery despite having a healer because again, Flame wants more attack and speed and also because if you can't safely engage turn 1 here, odd recovery or even recovery is useless. Also there is no dancer here. If you feel you need a dancer to better catch people trying to hit and run you, you do not want to use, instead of Bramimon for example, someone like Triandra. Triandra is bad because she will be isolated by Mila every time, so the only one option for you is Erdogan. Erdogan gets plus 5 defense from Nought. And if you use, let's say, uh, I think it's called Hell, he gets plus 10 defense, which is even better. Anyway, this defense overall is weaker against player phase, uh, I mean players, who wait for the bolt tower, and this building is still very dangerous. It has always been very dangerous. But for this kind of defense, however, Having catapult may help, not just because of the bolt tower but also the fence. You can place the catapult here, for example, and this is not going to hurt your defense because flame protects everyone, even your leaf, who also now covers for Edelgard for someone who can try to hit and run Edelgard. So you have options for your Catapult. I still believe Catapult is a bit of a gambling, but if you consider that eventually people now may use a combination of both tower and fence, even considering this little gambling factor, I believe now the Catapult is a better option than what it has been before. So it's definitely worth considering. So far we have only considered 
Pathfinder defense and Pathfinder is pretty good against people trying to hit and run you, but Anima defense doesn't have Pathfinder and people will use Regging, Cantopers 3, along with a fence, so you have to account for these elements. And here's then the third defense, which is the one I am using for this week, and it has some interesting features. I have two open columns here because Return Traps activates on both melee cavalries. First, Sigurd, second, Keda. Remem you remember what I have said before for my first defense? Having multiple buildings in this row denies engagement turn one, at least much better. So, why I am allowing you to engage from here? And maybe from here. Notice, Seros is very strong. She's not easy to kill. She's strong in player phase. I mean, enemy phase. But even if you kill her, avoiding second range is no easy task. If you decide instead to attack Peony or Keda, again you have to avoid second range and Bernadetta's range. If you want to attack Sigurd, and Keda from below, you cannot do this with Regin because of the trees, and you have to account for the fortress and the chair. The chair is here again to waste action. You have to destroy it before doing something, before trying to snipe Keda with, let's say, Ophelia from distance. So this is why, even with this kind of semi-open space, a uh, semi-open map, I would say, it's not so easy to engage turn one. You can do it, but again, you need some specific stuff. This kind of defense, I suspect, is very interesting against Savior. Let me show you how this works. Very well. you have my trust. So I have a fence here. It's not working turn one, but... Turn 2, it behaves like it would in turn 1. So what is interesting with this kind of defense is that unless your opponent use double savior, they might not expect you to use melee instead of range to attack them on first initiation having two different colors for your melee units causing them to move to different opposite directions like here and here for example will force your opponent to be very careful when selecting the offense team and when placing their own units overall as you have seen the placement of uh, buildings Structures and traps is very important. The traps here to deny a direct snipe from Regin, Kento plus 3. Here again to cause a gambling if you want to destroy this trap here from a distance. I mean this chair from a distance. You have to gamble on this and other stuff like that. So... You have definitely multiple options to protect yourself against abusive turn 1 hit and run using a fence. But in general, you have to watch out for two very dangerous scenarios. The one is called... Oops. One is called gravity. Let me show you. Against this defense here, if you want to use legendary cloud and successfully kill Seros, you're causing gravity on Sigurd and Sarah. If you can avoid Bernadetta's range and Keda's range by just What's this? after a snipe using reposition Kanto with Regin, you would think this is safe. I mean, against a standard defense, this is fine, but this one has Kia staff removing penalties, which implies. Gravity will not work anymore. So this means you cannot just let 
Cloud stay here because this guy will have gravity removed and he can hit Cloud. So what you want to do probably I think is this. It's not always easy but you can do it even against Kia stuff. Let's do it. Can't decide. Yes? Um, so here, as you can see, the fence is protecting everyone. It's in range. So that means my defense stays still. But believe me or not, if you let Claude here instead, Sigurd will attack and kill. That's it. So if you don't use Kia staff, you have to be very careful against gravity. It's super dangerous. Now the second danger is the possibility that IS will upgrade the level of a fa the fence in the future, which I suspect may happen. In this case, the hit and run would become even easier. But maybe by this time when this happens, we will get new toes new skills, units as a partial counterplay to or even strong counterplay to people trying to use hit and run. I am not going to speculate too much on this, we will see what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching.